Hello students, let's regard let's discuss regarding antepartum hemorrhage today. So what is antepartum hemorrhage? It is a bleeding from the genital tract or into the genital tract after 28 weeks of pregnancy. But this bleeding, it will be happening from the genital tract or into the genital tract, but it occurs before the pregnancy. So any bleeding from or into the genital tract after 28 weeks of pregnancy or before the birth of the baby, we will call it as antepartum hemorrhage. And this antepartum hemorrhage, it is mainly caused by three etiological factors. One, it can be because it, yeah, the bleeding from the, it will be from the placental site. Second one, it is because of any unexplained causes. And the third one, it is extra placental causes. So the reason behind the antepartum hemorrhage, it can be the placental bleeding, unexplained causes and the extra placental causes. So if you're seeing this causes of antepartum hemorrhage, see antepartum hemorrhage, three main causes are there. That is placental bleeding, unexplained causes and extra placental bleeding. And the placental bleeding can be either due to placenta previa or abruptio placenta. So antepartum hemorrhage means it consists of mainly two conditions that is placenta previa and abruptio placenta. So let us re discuss regarding placenta previa today. So what is placenta previa? When the placenta is implanted completely or partially in the lower uterine segment. So normally where the placenta is situated, it is in the upper pole of the uterus that is in the anterior part of the uterus. So <clears throat> when the placenta, if it is situated completely or partially in the lower uterine segment, then we will call it as placenta previa, okay? So what is the incidence? If you're seeing out of all deliveries, 0.5 to 1 percentage of all deliveries may have the placenta previa and in that 80 percentage of the cases will be multiparous women, okay? And if you're seeing there is some risk factors for this case that is age beyond 35 years of age, multiple pregnancy and high birth order so there is a chance so these three are the uh, incidence increased incidence or the risk factors we can call so these three are the risk factors for the placenta previa that is 35 years more than 35 years of age multiple pregnancy and high birth order then <clears throat> what is that uh, exact etiology behind this so if you are seeing the exact cause, it is unknown. It is not known what is the exact cause. But some theories or some postulates are there, which is defining the reason behind the placenta previa. So first one, it is dropping down theory. So what is this dropping down theory? So dropping down theory, it means that, see, whenever or during the implantation time, if the placenta is not implanted properly in the upper uterine segment, it will be falling down. It will be dropping down and then it is developing in the lower uterine segment. That is dropping down theory. Next is persistence of chorionic activity. If the chorionic levy or chorionic fontosum, if it is not working properly, then the placental attachment, it will be difficult in the upper uterine segment. Next, if there is any defect in the decidua. So what is decidua? It is nothing but the endometrium. So if there is any defect in the decidua, that is if the endometrium is not healthy, it cannot able to catch hold the placenta in the upper uterine segment. And then there is a chance of dropping down of the placenta to the lower uterine segment. And the last one is the big surface area of the placenta. That is, if the placenta is big, it, it cannot uh, accommodate only in the upper uterine segment. And if the placenta is big, it will be accommodating in the lower uterine segment also. So because of the big surface area of the placenta, mainly we can see such type of placenta in multiple pregnancy and all. Or, uh, <clears throat> so in this cases, there is a chance of uh, dropping down of placenta into the lower uterine segment. So this is the etiological factors. So moving on to our predisposing factors, already I have told that, that is multiple multiparity case, advanced maternal age that is beyond 35 years of age, history of the previous cesarean section and the placental site. So these are the chances of the, uh, or the uh, risk factors for the placenta previa.
Moving on to the types of placenta previa, there are four types of placenta previa. Stage 1 or low-lying placenta previa, stage 2 or marginal placenta previa, stage 3 or partially placenta previa and stage 4 complete or total placenta previa. So what is this stage 1 or low-lying? So if you are seeing the placenta, it has been in the upper uterine segment also and also some part of the placenta in the lower uterine segment. So this is known as low-lying placenta previa. Then second stage is marginal. If you are seeing the mar placenta, it has come till the margin of the cervix. Okay, but it is not covering the cervix. So this is known as marginal placenta previa. Third one, if you are seeing this placenta, it is covering the os, the internal os, but if it is dilating, when the uh, cervix is completely dilating to 10 centimeter, then some part of that will be open. Okay, so it means that it is partially covering the internal os. And if you are seeing the last stage, that is total placenta previa or complete placenta previa, even if the cervix is completely dilated to 10 centimeter, the placenta will be overlying the cervix. So that is known as stage 4 placenta previa or total placenta previa. I will again discuss that is stage 1 or low lying placenta. It means that some part of placenta is lying in the lower uterine segment. Second stage or the marginal placenta previa in that the placenta has extended till the margin of the internal os but it is not covering the os. Stage 3 or partially placenta previa, it means that uh, when the cervix is not dilated, it will be covering the internal os. But when the cervix is dilated to uh, 10 cm, uh, half of the cervix, it will be covered with the placenta. What is stage 4 or total placenta previa? Even if the placenta, even if the cervix is extended or dilated to 10 cm, then also the placenta will be completely covering the external loss. That is stage 4 or total placenta previa. What are the signs and symptoms of placenta previa? The only symptom is vaginal bleeding. That is fresh vaginal bleeding will be there. And if you are seeing the signs, the uterine sign is proportionate to the gestational age. The uterus will be relaxed and soft. There will be malpresentation and the head is floating. So these are the signs and symptoms. And if you are seeing the fetal heart sound is present. The exact diagnosis for placenta previa, it is sonography, which is the simplest and the safest method where we can able to find out till where the placental margin is extending. What is the fetal size? What is the fetal, fetal maturity? Regarding the fetal well-being, everything we can check through the sonography. The other thing is that MRI we can do and even a double setup examination. But nowadays, the double setup examination is not there because it is very, uh, what is, uh, it is very a serious issue that we have to palpate the uh, placenta vaginally and then we have to uh, do the double setup examination. So, because of all these things, we are not using the double setup examination. What are the complications? Maternally, if you are seeing during the pregnancy, there will be severe hemorrhage, malpresentation, premature labor. During the labor, there can be early rupture of the membranes, cord prolapse and slow dilatation of the cervix. During preparium, there is a chance of sepsis and subinvolution of uterus. For the fetus, the baby will be born LBW, that is low birth weight babies. Intrauterine death can happen and congenital malformation. What is the prevention for this case? That is, <clears throat> coming to the management, what is the prevention? Adequate antenatal care should be given uh, and we have to diagnose antenatally whether there is a low-lying placenta or not. Then, sometimes during the pregnancy, that is in the early stage itself, there will be warning hemorrhage. We should see that whether the, or we should educate the women regarding the warning hemorrhage. Family planning and limitations of birth should be there because we have saw in the risk factors that there is a chance that is one of the risk factors is multiparous women. So in order to avoid that, 
family planning and limitations of birth should be done as a preventive measure. If the woman is having bleeding at home, if she started to bleed at home, what has to be done? Immediately the patient should be put onto the bed and the amount of blood loss can be assessed. Then we have to transfer her to the hospital. So immediately shift her to the hospital. During the transport, a saline drip can be kept. And after the patient is getting admitted in the hospital, there should not be any vaginal examination. Only a quick and gentle abdominal examination can be done, but no vaginal examination. On admission, what we have to do? We have to check the general condition and vital signs of the patient. Sample should be taken for grouping and cross-matching because if we want to do the uh, blood transfusion, then that the crossing and matching should be done, grouping should be done. What is her HB level? That has to be estimated. Then the normal saline infusion should be done. Gentle abdominal examination, but no vaginal examination. Then to uh, note the amount of bleeding, inspection of vulva should be done. Now, what is the exact treatment or the expectant treatment? So, the expectant treatment is we have to, our aim is to continue the pregnancy. If the fetus has not uh, matured, if the fetus has not attained maturity, what is the aim of the treatment? The aim of the treatment is to continue the pregnancy. So, for that, what has to be done? Number one, there always an availability of blood for transfusion should be there and facilities for cesarean should be there. So the mother should be admitted in such a hospital that where she is having the facilities for cesarean, everything should be ready. Then, which mothers can be selected for the expectant treatment? The mother should be in a good health status. The duration of pregnancy, pregnancy is less than 37 weeks. Vagina bleeding should be absent. And fetal well-being is assured. So, those mothers can be selected for the expectant treatment. What is an expectant treatment exactly? The mother should be admitted in the hospital. Complete bed rest. The vulval parts has to be inspected frequently. Fetal well-being has to be assessed frequently. Hemoglobin estimation, blood grouping and urine for, for protein has to be done frequently. And as she is depriving of iron, then we have to supplement the hematinase. What is the exact treatment? So vaginal examination in the operation theater can be done. But if you are seeing vaginal examination is very risky, see that we can opt for a uh, case where there is a low-lying placenta or marginal placenta. But the exact treatment is Caesarean section, that is without doing any internal examination, when the fetus has acquired maturity, then we can pose the mother for the caesarean session. Clear? So this is regarding the placenta previa. Thank you.